When taking trades, whether longs or shorts, it's important to know what the overall bigger picture is. For stocks, we look at the indexes for trend direction guidance. Here are some technical analysis on the Swedish OMX S30. Given my heavy long positions in QuickBit and Starvolt, here's why I feel particularly comfortable owning them for some time to come. But before we continue, do note that nothing in this video is financial advice. Everything I say is my own interpretations and conclusions. Do your own due diligence prior to any investment. Now, here's the Swedish OMXS30 index. Let's start off with the weekly and monthly charts. To begin with, we have a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 Elliott wave count, where we currently seem to have entered the fifth wave, the one that has a particular inclination of going parabolic. I say seem to because it can still retrace back into the triangle, thus being a false breakout. That means we could hover around for longer in our wave 4 prior to being ready for the real wave 5. But for now, given what we know, I will treat this as a wave 5. Now, the fifth wave is also when technicals tend to fly out the window as euphoria takes over. We've seen this time and again. One of the later big cases was the Bitcoin Wave 5 run in late 2017 when the price went up by roughly 260% in one month. But just because we may have entered a Wave 5 in the OMX S30 doesn't mean it will take off this year. However, in the upcoming time to come, be it 6 months or 3 years, things do look very bullish, at least given the technical map we currently have at hand. For bear in mind that the technical map may change at any time and invalidate any bullish sentiments we know of as of now. This is why all of the strongest technical analysts I know constantly change their minds, or rather update their minds, continuously as new technical clues and information surface to the charts. The Elliott wave is strengthened by the fact that we've just broken out of an almost five year long bullish ascending triangle, beginning its establishing in March 2015. This technical triangle is particularly beautiful as the breakout happened roughly two thirds in, which is literally textbook style. Technical targets are more difficult to make when anticipating new all-time highs as we have no previous support or resistance levels to relate to. It is particularly difficult in parabolic wave 5s because, as mentioned earlier, all technicals tend to fly out the window due to collective euphoria and frenzy. The technical target given the triangle itself is roughly 2180. We come to this by measuring the initial high of the formation with the initial low. We then add that distance, which is roughly 470, to the outbreak level of the flat top of the triangle, which is at around 1710, to arrive at 2180. Do note that this is the technical target for the triangle alone. This doesn't mean the fifth wave will stop there, for quite likely it will continue beyond that. The Fibonacci 1618 indicates on its own a target at around 2016, but again, if we were to get a euphoric wave 5, these technicals will be of little or any relevance. My only advice if we were to get a strong upwards wave 5 movement is be careful and sell off gradually and in increments to protect your funds, because once it begins to turn downwards again, you'll need to buckle up for we'll go down fast. For after this wave 5, a financial crisis that will dwarf everything we've seen before likely lies ahead. Anybody who, like myself, closely follows macroeconomics can tell from a mile away that the numbers that support the entire global economy are rotten, and that's putting it mildly. Leading traders and economists such as Ray Dalio and Peter Schiff talk about the upcoming crisis as the mother bubble, the bubble of all bubbles. I will discuss the upcoming financial disaster in a soon to come episode where I will tell you how to seize the moment from a trading perspective. For this will be the money making opportunity of a lifetime, unfortunately though at the expense and disaster of the many. Whether the OMX S30 proceeds parabolically or just by another 20% or so, it will carry most stocks with it, which makes me even more comfortable in my position longs in QuickBit and Starvolt. The long term trend looks strong and bullish, the short term trend on the other hand does not. So moving on to the daily chart. 
When the RSI swings wildly between the outer red and the outer blue lines, it's generally a sign of either formation creations, such as pennants, flags, triangles, etc., or it's a sign of sideways movements. And sideways movements is exactly what we've had in the last three years, as we've neared the middle parts of the big triangle. And, as we can see, the RSI confirms this with those wild movements back and forth. Short term I am bearish, for technically we are likely in for a temporary correction. Here's why. 1. We're trading at a diagonal resistance. As mentioned in a previous technical analysis episode though, I would never use these to base any trading decisions on, as diagonal lines are deceitful. They often need to be redrawn, but they still give broader guidelines. But for whatever it's worth, the fact remains that we're currently trading near this upper resistance. This is certainly not where you want to go long. And whenever a price breaks upwards from an ascending channel or resistance, it generally tends to be fairly explosive but short and quickly reverse back under the same support and resistance line again. This is one of those things that have tricked me stupid in the beginning of my trading journey. 2. We have a big RSI divergence on the daily chart with three higher price highs but three lower RSI tops. And this clear RSI touch below the upper blue RSI line is particularly bearish news. 3. Many of our previous all-time high tops have been rejected with some sort of a correctional move. 4. A retest of the breakout line, which in this case is around 1690 to 1700, is quite common after a breakout, although it statistically is at the expense of the performance. This means that a retest often affects the technical target of the triangle formation to be a lower one. 5. On the hourly chart we have a fairly rare diamond formation. These typically retrace back the way they initially came from, and since this diamond is a top formation, it statistically has a 60% chance of going down again. Breakouts from diamonds tend to be steep when the diamond is at a bottom, when in a top on the other hand, they tend to move a bit slower. And 6. Also on the 1 hour chart, we have a long RSI divergence where the RSI itself has also entered the bearish RSI channel. Given the bearish short-term tendencies combined, I'm looking to go short. Here's how I'll play it. If we break below the support and resistance line at 1779, I will take a healthy short position with roughly 10 times leverage. My initial target will be at the previous support at 1760, where I'll sell off 15% and move my stop loss to break even. My second target will be at 1683 to 1695, which is also my main target for several technical reasons. First of all, it aligns with the 0.382 Fibonacci level, which is the strongest level for continuation movements. Secondly, we have support from the green Ichimoku. Thirdly, this would constitute a retest of the big triangle breakout on the weekly and monthly. And lastly, by the time we get there, the EMA 200 will likely be hovering around in this very area too, which in itself is a support. For those reasons, I'll sell another 60% and prepare to close the remaining position and go long if we manage to stay above this level. If it does break below, I will consider repositioning myself for another short as this would be a big sign of weakness. If and when the situation arises where I will go short below 1779, I will place my stop loss at around 1820 depending on how it plays out. So, to sum it all up, long term, as in the upcoming few months to 1-3 to three years, things look very bullish given the technical map we have at hand right now. Short term, however, I do expect a retracement, most likely to the 1683-1695 to area at which I will close the majority of my short and look for a long opportunity. If we break below 1779, I am ready with a 10x short. Hope this helped you.